Welcome back to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we're going to be modifying the chassis to accommodate these beautiful, one-of-a-kind, 3D-printed 911R LEDs. All right, welcome back. This is a blisteringly exciting day for me because I've been waiting months and months and months to do today's project. And why months and months and months? Well, I'm on record as saying, if you wanna get into the car world, one of the best things you can do right now is learn Fusion 360, which is a free 3D modeling software you can get right now on the interwebs. Basically, you take these 2D objects and turn them into 3D shapes. From there, you can send them to various places that we're gonna talk about right now. So part of what this build is, is this exercise in, to me, modern technology. So if you look at the original design for this car, it's got these beautiful integrated 911R LEDs. I had the concept sitting at a Mexican bar in San Diego and I was like, I really wanna do this. I don't know how to do it yet, but we'll figure it out. Months later, I would meet Nick from Lauren Teal, who does these killer, innovative 911R LEDs that you can plug right in in place of a regular rear 911 taillight. Like you can go buy them right now and plug them in and have them on your car. And don't worry, I will link up all of these cool companies in the description. So we jumped on the phone and did a little masterminding and tried to figure out what we could do for an early prototype. It happened that he was already working on something kind of similar. So we just modified it for the Blasphemy build. It is, however, a one of a kind set of taillights, which is super cool as far as I'm concerned. So to make these things work, we needed a combination of a number of different things. First, this black 3D printed taillight housing, and that's gonna mount permanently on the inside of the car. Will I be able to take it out? Yes, and that's part of the design. But ideally, the metal piece will wrap around this thing and all I'll have to do is screw the bulb in to the outside and we'll have dialed in 3D printed lights. Once the chassis is mounted to the car, I needed to use these parts, and these come from a company called Send Cut Send. You design stuff in Fusion 360, you send it to them, they cut it, and then they send it back to you. So, what happens is this mounts to the car, and then this gets welded around the outside and will wrap around the outside of the taillight assembly, and it will hopefully look completely integrated like it's supposed to be there. So I've been working with a company called Raise 3D based in Irvine, which is just down the road. I met them at SEMA this year. And once they got introduced to the project, they were like, we're totally in. I've been working with a guy named Nick over there and I just have to send him even an incomplete file. He's like, I got this. And he cranks out a 3D prototype for me. It's so cool to have somebody who has so much 3D printing experience on my side because I don't at all but I do know when things are possible and he makes them possible. In fact, they have my deck lid right now for a future project that you guys don't know about yet, but it's gonna be rad. So let me take you guys through the iterations of the prototype so you can see how we got to where we're at now. Okay, starting from version 1.0. These fragile little things are what Nick and I originally came up with. And for obvious reasons, they didn't work. They fit okay. Um, the idea behind them was these removable middle panels and that's because basically like this chassis was a slightly modified version of the thing he'd already created. These spacers and those lenses can fit right on this thing and he wouldn't have to do much in the production department. Unfortunately, the chassis itself was really thin and it broke pretty quickly. I needed something a little beefier. So version two was a much beefier version. It looks really cool as well. Um, it's printed on a diagonal, which actually makes it really a lot stronger from a 3D printing standpoint. But um, you can see my marks here. I wanted like a little bit of different spacing on there. I wanted uh, 10 more millimeters added to the end, just because I wanted just the right amount of stick out for the lenses. Hi, Ben. Version three, we got much closer. Uh, the problem with this is for whatever reason, these walls thickened up and the lenses didn't fit into them anymore. And then I also needed a little bit of spacing, like the spacing between the bolt holes was a little wrong. I had to bring it back 16 millimeters and then just this one side needed to go in 10 mil. So 
We modified that. This one was so very close. This thing had everything right. It fit beautifully, but once again, for some reason, the lenses didn't fit in. So another little mod, and we were able to get the lenses to screw in. And this is what version, I don't know what this would be. Um, 5.0, 5.5, something like that. To put in perspective though, the timing between version three and version four was November until February. So that took a little while. That was responsible for the delay. If you can see here on the back, it's got this kind of cut out. This LED fits right into the back turns and snaps in. So you have this nice inner light and an outer ring. I don't actually know how they all work yet, but Nick from Lauren Teal assures me that they will be super dialed even for someone who's not very electrically sound such as myself. <laughs> hey Ben, I'm, I'm right in the middle of filming, bro. I'm right in the middle of filming. So looking at the back of the light, you can see that this is where the other LED light fits in. That one goes right in the middle. You can kind of see it in there doing its thing. And um, so we've got a, a ring that's right here and then this middle part and uh, they will each have a function. I just don't know exactly what the functions are as of yet. So if you look here on the inside, this is the uh, previous iteration before the final. You can kind of see that there is a octagon there for a captive nut. Uh, on the inside and the outside. So what I can do here is have the screws already ready to roll and already ready to mount. So the fit is exactly like you'd assume. It just pops into the factory mounting locations just like that and that. And that will screw in. At that point, this metal piece will get welded on the car around the circumference until it matches perfectly with the edge. And you can see that one hole is round and the other one is ovalized because the ovalized hole has to wrap around this thing and sort of create that illusion. I've had to modify the chassis in a couple of different ways. One of the biggest challenges I had was getting these two areas to be level. And the problem is, is that on the factory car, the inside of your fender is about 10 millimeters inboard from the outside lip here. So it didn't create a very flat platform to weld on. And what would happen is the whole thing would kind of twist and I wasn't able to do what I needed to do. So what I've done is I've welded some metal brake line around the outside edge here to flatten it up. So now I have like this perfectly flat area to weld this thing to. Now, I still have to really take my time and make sure that it stays square as I'm coming around the corner, especially right here. Like this little spot here is so thin and delicate that it really wants to buckle. So I've got to really take my time in this video to make sure that the thing mounts exactly like it's supposed to. I get all this stuff fitted with the lights in and then I can remove them. Why is that so far off? It's way off. All right, so unsurprisingly, this thing has to be a little bit twiddled to work. This tab was a little bit too far this way and I, I couldn't get my piece to fit well, but I, I bumped it over and now this fits really nicely. And then this part actually needed to be shaved down. I'm gonna shave it down a little bit more to give myself some wiggle room.
I'll see if I can make that work for the uh, final iteration. This, by the way, is still a prototype. The actual version that will be installed in the car is gonna be this kind of crazy carbon fiber situation. But uh, right now, I wanna say I'm relatively close to, I'm kind of looking at the space here between these, these two and I'm trying to make sure this thing is centered between the two. I'm gonna probably put something under here, a little piece of foam tape or something, just to make sure this stays centered. And then I'm really gonna focus on getting these two pieces, well really this, as flush as humanly possible. Because I can always work on the bottom. But I've gotta hit this flush and then I've gotta hit this around this part so it stays arcing. Then I'll probably have to tack it and then start attacking how I'm going to carve this piece out and like where I need to mark it. It's actually really hard to measure right now until I get it kind of where it's gonna fit. Um, I'm gonna have to grind all this down or shave it down or something, but I don't exactly know where yet. Maybe I can eyeball it. All right, let's boost that thing first. I've got some sticky foam here. I'm gonna put on the base. Don't do this. Oh yeah, that's already better. Let's see how close I got here. So it's got a little bit of, uh, of dish in terms of how it fits on the body. So I'm just trying to give it a little bit, which I just did pretty good actually. Ow, that was my foot. All right, I feel like I'm close enough just to get an idea. Let's see if I can get it close with a tack or two. And that's what we do around these parts. We send it. This is a little nerve wracking, I'm not gonna lie. Get in there, Lewis. Get in there, Max. What do you got this year?
All right, so I've got it on. This is the most fitted I've ever had one of these. It's still very loosely tacked. I can cut it off in a couple minutes if I need to. So what I need to do now, the big test is to see if I can pull the light frame out from the inside so that I can then do it on the outside. But I'm pretty happy with the stick out. It's got just the right amount of stick out. It's nice and low key. Um, obviously, you know, it'll have to be all body worked and I'll fill all this in with weld and make sure it's like nice, beautiful ground in, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but let's see if we can get the inner frame out because if I can, then I can do the other one. And if they both look equal, then uh, we can weld it up. All right, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Alright, win number one out of the way. Alright, okay. That is really good news. That, is, that was big, you guys. Getting those out was a BFD, as we like to say in the biz. Come on, baby. Okay. Fingers crossed. Come on. Ooh, that is in there. That is in there. Okay, what do we do here? How do we do this? That goes that way. All right, so that's kind of loose. Okay, all right, it's loose-ish. Oh, yes! Ah. Boom! Oh, dude, that's rad. That is so rad. Do you know how many months went into planning this to make sure that that just happened and this came out? Oh, man. That's cool. The wonders of modern technology, you guys. So the car's painted. I put this thing in. Just like this. Boom. Screw it in. Yeah, do that right there. Boom, screw it in. It's mounted. Fuck yeah. All right. Yes, dude. Yes, dude. Yes. That came out lovely, too. I'm very excited, you guys. I'm very excited. Very excited. All right, dope. Let's do the other side. All right, I'm gonna duplicate this process on the other side, get them to the exact same point, and I will check in with you guys in a minute. All right, guys, here we are. The car is zero and leveled out, and the lights are totally symmetrical. What I've done is, obviously, I leveled out the car, and then I measured from the floor to the top part of each one of these, and they are plus minus one millimeter. For this, I used this, which is called a measuring tape. This is a flexible tool that has numeric increments on the tape, and you may use it to verify symmetry. So what I've done is I've really paid attention to this top line and how it interfaces with the car, because I can always clean up the bottom. The bottom's got a bunch of cleaning up to do anyway. I've got, you know, these new fenders. It's got a lead over here. I've got a little gap here that I'm gonna deal with. So I'm most important, I'm most concerned about this line on each side and how level and straight they are. And they're both great. So next steps are to continue to pay a lot of attention to the gaps here. All right, time to get the headphones on and weld, weld, weld then clean these things up. I will see you guys in a second. Well, the good news is it looks ridiculous. Like, 
It looks so good. It's totally blended. The bad news is I'm out of argon gas and I can't weld the other side. So what I'm gonna do is feather the primer on this side and then hit it with a little bit of self etching primer just so I can have an idea of how it all kind of blends together into one unit. What do you think, Benny? All right, let's go. All right, guys. I'm here in the daylight now, and you guys can see how symmetrical these are. I got a little bit of work to do here. So if you look down here, I've got a little gap that's just running along this. I'm trying to make this edge as straight as humanly possible. All right, so I've got a chunk of metal here. Um, I have put a little primer on the back side of it. And the reason why I'm not cutting it is because so it's easier just to weld it and tack it along the edge and then just cut it off and finish it with your, your grinder and or your sander than it is to just cut like this perfect little sliver that, that goes to a point because you'd melt it anyway. As always, I'm trying to feel that this thing is flush. That's the number one goal always is to make sure that this is flush with the body. I can cut the big stuff off now. I can get away with it. I'll try to cut this off a little bit. Okay. There's my little patch panel. I'm gonna just put a straight edge across there. I'm gonna grind this down first, put a straight edge across there and, and uh, cut it and grind it. spots and we're going to be good to go. All right guys, there we are. Now the left side one went on a little better than the right side one, but we are really close. I'm going to do a quick little fiberglass filler shot on each one of them and finish it off with some final filler and then we should be done with this bad boy. Right, guys we are almost to the promised land I've just done a little bit of a final filler on each side so I'm gonna hit that again with 180 and then probably really quick with like whatever I have 220 400 something kind of smooth another quick layer of self etching primer and gonna call it guys check it out these things are awesome the initial body work is done this thing is ready for a couple of coats of primer uh, just for fun I'll probably just bolt the lenses back on here but super stoked man they just look great hope you guys dug the the process as well well that is arguably the coolest thing I've done on this build and there's been a lot of cool things on this build. 
I've got the dual radiators up front funneling this way from the bass mouth. I've got ST flares. I've got automated quarter windows. I've got a really bitchin' scoop that's being redesigned right now, but you'll see that soon. I've got uh, active aero. And now we have 3D printed, custom designed, one-off LED integrated taillights. So kind of feeling psyched. The next video, believe it or not, and I'm so excited about this, is gonna be priming, like really truly priming the whole body for the first time, like the actual real primer that I can then start block sanding down and getting down to beautiful perfection before paint. Are you guys stoked? I am stoked. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really dug this video. Uh, I wanna thank Send Cut Send. I wanna thank Raise 3D. I wanna thank Lauren Teal. I want to thank, uh, who else? Who, who else am I missing? At Machki on Instagram, I'll put it right here, uh, who's a designer for Mercedes who did the original rendering for me. I want to thank myself for having really cool ideas for this build. <laughs> uh, anyway, I want to thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, almost at 2 million views for the channel, so that's kind of cool. Uh, you guys keep on rocking. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.